Hey, what's going on guys? In this video, I wanna talk about my experience to this point in Launch School's JavaScript track. Now, for you guys that don't know, Launch School is a coding bootcamp alternative that trains people to be software engineers. And recently, they released a new course that focuses on front and back end JavaScript. So you can learn full stack web development uh, using the JavaScript programming language primarily. And I am in this course right now I just finished the main back-end course section which is called JS 101 programming foundations with JavaScript and this is also one of the longest courses in the curriculum so in total depending on whether or not you take any of the optional courses the curriculum has 11 to 13 courses uh, and this is like I said the longest one and I'm just gonna go over briefly how it's split up uh, how long each section took me and then my thoughts on the course so far and then some of the recommendations I would have for other people who are planning on going through the course. So just to get started, this course is broken down into six lessons. So the lessons are preparations, small problems, practice problems, JavaScript collections, advanced JavaScript collections, and then slightly larger problems. And the way that this broken down is that as you move through those six sections, there becomes increasingly more focus on longer and longer practice problems versus introduction to different aspects of the JavaScript programming language. So one of the things that you start off with in the first part of this course is a review of what should have been uh, a prerequisite for the course, which is their introduction to JavaScript uh, book. And this is a free resource. You can go on Launch School and look at their open curriculum, their bookshelf, and they have a number of free resources. Uh, one of the books is this introduction to JavaScript book. So you can go there and look at it. This is part of the first part of the course and really takes you through all the specifics of the language, different uh, cases where the syntax may change, things to look out for and then all the basics uh, like different types of you know functions and variables and objects and you go through all of those basics that you would think of for learning a new programming language as I mentioned in these six sections as you start to work through they focus less and less on specific use cases for the syntax and more on specific problems that you're try trying to solve so that you get this increasing you know breadth of exposure to different ways to use JavaScript uh, for increasingly complex problems this especially becomes the case when you get to the last section, the sixth of six sections, where you start to get some slightly longer problems. I believe the longest one, depending on how you solve the challenge, got up to just under 200 lines of code. So for a beginner, uh, that's going to be getting a little more complex than what you might be used to with, you know, toy problems or small problems that you're solving in maybe 20 or 30 lines of code. It does start to move away from a focus on different JavaScript uh, specific topics and moves more into the back-end programming fundamentals to solve very common problems you're probably going to see in many different types of courses. Now, up to this point, that's probably what you're expecting to hear from any type of you know software engineering school or boot camp. What I will say is different about this uh, course is that it was laid out in a way such that you really can, from start to finish, go through at your own pace. You can do the whole course with minimal input from other people. You don't really need to ask any questions. You don't need TAs. You literally can work through the entire uh, first course in this curriculum completely on your own, which is what I did. Now, one of the things that I didn't like about Launch School was that if you do want to get help, the only way you can do it is in you know other groups of students who are volunteering to work together. There's no formal way to get help if you do feel like you're stuck. But the good part is, unlike a lot of other curriculums that may leave you with different gaps in your knowledge, they have explicitly laid out every possible question you could have as far as I can tell so that you know there's always little bits of information usually in the form of hints within the course that you can optionally uh, choose as a means of helping yourself if you do get stuck and these are layered throughout the course basically what they'll do is if you have a course section that has a number of different you know problems and exercises in all the places where they've had students get stuck or anticipate that students will get stuck there's what's called a hint which in most 
most cases in the course literally is a box that you can check, which opens up a more detailed explanation of the concept you're going over. And of course, gives you a hint as to, you know, different things that they anticipate will hold students back from understanding that concept. So this is something that's really helpful. And again, facilitates your independent learning, letting you move all the way through the course by yourself. Okay, so all that being said, in parallel to this six main sections of this first course in the curriculum, there's also the practice problems that go with JS 101 for this portion of the curriculum. As I mentioned in previous videos, the practice problems include 127 different types of problems that each have a specific topic that they address. So an example of a topic would be uh, string processing, um, uh, different types of array methods and problems based around those. Those would be examples of two of the sections. There are about 15 different sections, meaning different focuses of problems from things like array methods and list processing to medium and advanced problems, which are the slightly longer problem. Now for these practice problems, they don't get as long as some of the longest problems in the actual course section of JS 101, but they do get up to the point where I believe some of the longest uh, problems in this section, these practice problems were in the 30 to 50 lines of code section. So still not very long, but if you're a complete beginner, definitely more complex than some of those simpler toy problems and things like that. Also, I will say that most of these address topics that are specifically uh, confusing for new learners and they're meant to address these topics in detail. So a lot of these problems, these 127 practice problems actually can take quite a bit of time. Now there's some that take as little as five minutes and there's other ones that I believe took me close to an hour just because it was a concept I really had to dig into to have that feeling that I really understood it at a deep level. I tried not to move on and skip over anything where I had a you know fuzzy understanding and I did spend a lot of time going back through the problems which is why it's taken me at this point about two and a half months to complete uh, this section of the course. Now at this point in my studying journey I am getting ready for the first assessment. I've gone through all the coursework and completed all but a few of the most challenging practice problems which I will continue to work through as I prepare for this assessment. And now that I've completed the course I have allotted about one to two weeks for me to prep for the assessment based on you know how much time I have every day from now until then. One thing I'm a little unsure about is you know just how difficult the assessments are uh, if they're going to be you know the equivalent of a full engineering interview or if it's just going to be you know a few practice problems that maybe take 30 minutes or less. I'm not really sure so my plan right now is to you know go through and read over the assessment materials repeatedly. I have yet to go through the study materials so I'm sure all my questions about the assessment will be answered in those if they're anything like the rest of the course. So right now what I can tell you is that in the next one to two weeks I'll be done with my pre-assessment studying. I'll give you guys another video reporting back on how that was and I'll answer any further questions about the details of the course that I didn't cover in this video. I know in previous videos I've kind of skipped over a lot of the details so you know as I get further in the course I'm going to provide more details based on the questions that you guys send me. So anyway that's all I want to do for now. This video is already getting long but I hope you guys enjoyed this and got something useful out of it. If you are considering joining Launch School either one of their tracks reach out to me either in the comments or you can uh, head over to my homepage and check out the email address for a contact. Shoot me your questions let me know what you'd like to see a video on and I'd be happy to make one on that topic specific to launch school. So anyway, if you haven't already, make sure to hit that like button and make sure to subscribe so that you're notified anytime that I come out with a video like this. Thanks guys.